Hey guys, back at the bandsaw again today. Uh, this is this circle cutting jig that I cut all those bowl blanks with after changing the motor on my saw and the tires on the belt saw and everything else. Anyways, this jig actually works really well and I'm very pleased with it. There's a couple of things I would, I would change. Um, one of the things that I did early on was a guy in my comments on the first video I posted up suggested instead of me clamping it here that I put this L bracket on which you can see right there, it's shaped like an L, that's why I'm calling it an L bracket. That, that made a big difference because I can just go like that and then I can put a big heavy blank on here and this doesn't tip over. If you notice right now when I push here this is flexing. Now this is 24 millimeter, that's just under an inch um, subflooring. It's very sturdy, very hard, very good plywood but even so it still flexes. So using big blanks like me you know, three quarter inch would be a minimum. I might even double up three quarter inch just to make it stronger. So, a couple things I would change. This is the uh, adjustable movable part here that you set for the diameter of the bowl that you want to cut or the bowl blank you want to cut. After using this a while, I'm getting, of course, divots all in the same spot. <coughs> and so, what I thought would be a good idea to do is just router in here either a piece of steel or even just a piece of hardwood would be better, a piece of resin or plastic or something. Because this, I can see down the road, this is going to be a problem because what happens is you get a couple of divots and you try to put it where you want to put it and as you tighten it up, it moves because it goes into the deepest divot. So uh, that's a minor problem. Um, one of the other things is, how did I make this? Now, as you can see, let me just put this aside. This piece here is actually independent of, these, of this piece, of these actually two pieces. And it's held on, of course, by this, this piece and then this piece here. So it all works pretty good. The thing is, though, how do you cut these 45s? So as you can see on the end there, there's two 45s. Well, this one here was easy to cut. I just put it in the table saw and tilted the blade to 45, and I cut that one easily. But the other one... I mean, I did a stop cut on that one. How do you cut it? I think you can see on the bottom here, see I did a stop cut. Well, how do you cut this one? Well, I know you can see it there, but there's a faint line there. What I ended up doing was cutting this all, cutting from here all the way back. Then I took this piece and stuck it in there, and then I trimmed off, oh, I trimmed off on the, Because of course now this, this is going to be two different thicknesses because you're losing two curves on one side and only one curve on the other side. So then on the other side here, I trimmed it until when you put these two together, I got a fairly nice snug fit. This isn't super snug. Oh, I'm off camera. This isn't super snug, but it's snug enough. I mean, this isn't a, you know, it's like a high precision jig here. So you have to cut that through. And then what I did was I glued it back and I put, I put some pin nails in to hold it initially while I glued it and clamped it. And then I put three screws in here. So this is, this is now one piece again. But that's how I get that second cut is I actually cut all the way through and then I had to trim it so that it fit tight again. Anyways, that's it. I had some questions on, on this jig. And so I thought I'd just quickly answer them. And uh, I've been banging away at the ball blanks. I got actually the first uh, large blank uh, cord up. I've been uh, using the McNaughton uh, coring, or what do they call it, bowl saver, center saver, the McNaughton coring, coring rig, which I've had limited success with in the past, but because i got all those blanks to do now, I think by the time I get done with all these blanks, I'm either going to uh, pull my hair, hair out and uh, bought something different, or I will have mastered it. Hopefully I'm going to master it. It's, it's okay. I think one of the biggest problems is my DVR, my Nova DVR is, is a little bit... Uh, underpowered. I got to spin a little bit faster than I'd like to and sometimes it kind of catches and you got to go change your underwear but yeah it's okay. Just keep an extra pair of underwear on hand. I'm uh, just going to go over and show you the mess over here right now. This mess here is all from just doing those three bowls there. Rough turning green wood is really fun but boy it makes a mess. <laughs> it's okay. It all goes in bags. Well I did this blank first because there's actually there's a crack in it and uh, I, I put some CA glue on the crack and I don't know if it's going to survive. It probably won't, but we'll see. But anyways, I thought that if I screw this blank up on my first attempt at coring after not doing it for a long time, 
it'll be okay. So you can see the sea egg there. there. But anyways, this is a nice big bowl, and that's not a bad size bowl. That's like a you know a soup or a cereal size bowl. So if I get better at this, I should be able to get four bowls out of these blanks. This is pretty pretty much the same size as most of these blanks that I have are, and I have a few more here left to uh, <laughs> left to do. So these are the small ones here. These small ones here, I'll get one bowl. I might get two out of those. I don't know. Probably not worth it. So my vlog for the day, just a little quickie to answer some questions on that uh, bandsaw circle cutting sled, bowl blank circle cutting sled, and just show you kind of the mess I'm making in my workshop. Anyways, that's it. Everybody, please stay safe and uh, wash your hands, wear your mask if you're outside and amongst other people, and social distance by doing something in your workshop. Get out there and make something. You know, just sit and binge watch whatever on Netflix. Anyways, take care, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.